Elon Musk has been taking on his adversaries one by one. He has picked fights with the world's wealthiest people, from Zuckerberg to Bill Gates, and it's Klaus Schwab this time. Musk has been making headlines for his latest feud, and the internet is going crazy over it. But why is Elon Musk on the hunt for Klaus Schwab? What compelled him to pursue Klaus? What is he thinking? In this video, we'll take a look at everything you need to know about Elon Musk exposing Klaus Schwab for his corruption. Elon Musk has battled numerous challenges to civilization, but he may be about to face his most difficult struggle yet. Finding the truth now has the ability to save us all from the Great Reset, assuming we can see through the propaganda, falsehoods and dishonesty. Elon recently made headlines when he stated that he is becoming increasingly convinced that corporate ESG is the devil incarnate. Simply explained, an ESG score measures a company's long-term exposure to environmental, social and governance risks that are usually overlooked in traditional financial analyses. Energy efficiency, worker safety and board diversity are among the risks that might have major financial consequences. A high ESG rating shows that a company manages its ESG risks well in comparison to its peers, where a low ESG rating suggests that the company is more vulnerable to mismanaged ESG risks. Elon turned to Twitter to voice his displeasure over the news that his firm has been removed from the S&P 500 ESG index. Our fundamental rights to free expression, free assembly and free movement have been robbed by fabricated mandates. Our magnificent country, the United States of America, has devolved into a fascist dictatorship. Our free press has turned into a China-style propaganda factory and we have witnessed Stalin-level slaughter, with millions of people dying prematurely in countries where obligatory mass vaccinations are in place. America and the West were caught off guard by a massive bum rush, and many now believe it is too late to resist the globalist goal of a few oligarchs who comprise the World Economic Forum. With trillions of dollars in lubricants, these de facto oligarchs dominate the world's levers of power through their acquisition of the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and secondarily, NATO, the NIH, the FDA, and a slew of three-letter agencies, including the CIA and the NSA. Two space startups recently announced a collaboration to launch the first commercial payload to Mars in 2024. It was a daring announcement that drew widespread media attention, and for good reason. NSA has been focused on Mars for years, but it is only in recent years that the idea of extending human life to the Red Planet has become plausible. Even 10 years ago, this would have seemed like an impossible pipe dream. However, with payload costs falling as a result of a growing landscape of private companies like SpaceX innovating faster and cheaper than government agencies, it's only a matter of time, in this case a couple of years, before it becomes a reality. Meanwhile, it is difficult to help the general public and the media understand what this means for the global future of humanity, especially when polarizing topics such as space travel and artificial intelligence are involved. The first thing that comes to mind is ensuring human survival. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Neuralink, suggested at the 2017 World Government Summit in Dubai that humans must merge with machines in order to remain relevant in the age of AI. He isn't alone. Leading university geneticists are already researching ways to genetically alter DNA to allow humans to survive on Mars. This relates to another sensitive topic, transhumanism, which Klaus Schwab proposed in his book The Fourth Industrial Revolution. Klaus Schwab's Great Reset, far from being a conspiracy theory, has been openly published in his book of the same name, and he has been identified in a submission to the International Criminal Court. World-class attorneys such as Rainer Fjellmich have attempted to indict him and his co-conspirators, but the WEF, like any mafia, has eluded arrest. When a mafia is in charge, it can pay individuals off or bump them off, at least at first, until something unforeseen happens. The Italian Mafia was brought down by a frustrated man and the RICO law. In the case of the WEF, it is Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter. The Italian Mafia held a stronghold on corruption and power in New York City in the 1980s. Don John Gotti, the dapper John, bribed jurors and intimidated those he couldn't corrupt. We are now seeing gaps in the WEF's armor, with unexpected increases in life insurance fatalities, tremendous exposure on heart attacks in the young following immunizations, and now Elon Musk's sudden takeover of Twitter. Unforeseen issues usually develop in any criminal scheme, such as the Italian Mafia or the World Economic Forum, and the perfect crime can never be carried out without a hitch. At least 10 things can go wrong for every item a thief plans well. The most serious issue is that someone may speak similarly to Sammy. If one of the criminals feels betrayed, he may turn against the organization. Once this information becomes public, the game is over. Whether you like Musk or not, he has been barred from the World Economic Forum's Great Reset. The oligarchs had to deal with Musk after an unsuccessful attempt to short-sell his Tesla Corporation shares and bankrupt him. 
With Musk's purchase of Twitter, the oligarch's control on media and knowledge is crumbling. And many more people will learn about the Great Reset, the fabricated pandemic, and all the attendant lies. Soon, we shall see a tidal wave of justice crash into the Great Reset plan. It took only one person to bring down John Gotti, and it may take only one individual to alter the tide of the Great Reset. That is precisely why the mainstream media is railing against Musk. You can hear them urgently, but mistakenly lumping Musk along with the WEF sociopaths. Elon Musk, who most likely has Asperger's syndrome, is clearly not a sociopath. Take a look at Anthony Fauci, who appears to satisfy all of the requirements for sociopathy. Sociopaths, like the Dapper John and many criminals, are charming and skilled manipulators. They are capable of deceiving cops, other authorities and even parole boards. They are frequently elected and well-liked public politicians. They are classic confidence guys, capable of gaining trust and then ruthlessly abusing that trust with little remorse. Classic predators. They are never worried or anxious. Those with Asperger's syndrome, on the other hand, are socially awkward. They are not known for their charisma or charm. A person with Asperger's might have difficulty deceiving a friend or relative. They'd have a hard time arguing their way out of a traffic penalty. Asperger's patients frequently have savant-like ability in numbers, mathematics or spatial skills. However, these come at the sacrifice of social abilities. Not so with Tony Fauci, Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab or the numerous CEOs of vaccine corporations. Elon is the real deal and you get exactly what you see. He is not skilled at deception, unlike the mainstream media. Our government and vaccination officials and those at the World Economic Forum are. So when CNN or Business Insider try to convince you that Musk is the devil, remember that these are the same news outlets that falsely informed you that vaccines were safe and effective, that immunizations did not cause heart attacks, and that ivermectin was just for horses. To determine the reality, however, one need not believe me, but rather open one's eyes to doctors, George Farid and Brian Tyson's testimony of saving 10,000 lives, many of which were saved using ivermectin. The legacy media, the untrustworthy fact-checkers and the so-called reputable news sources are the same ones that told you that the Great Reset was just a conspiracy theory. These are the same sources who were paid off by the Gates Foundation and who informed you Remdesivir was the gold standard effective treatment for COVID. All of these claims were proven to be untrue. You would have been correct most of the time if you had believed the reverse of what CNN and Business Insider, mouthpieces of the WEF and now our government, reported. Once again, this contradictory evidence is leading you to mistrust Musk's motivations in purchasing Twitter. I hope that even my harshest critics remain on Twitter, because that is what free expression entails, Musk wrote on Twitter. The World Economic Forum would never invite someone criticizing vaccines or allow any captured media to speak about the benefits of repurposed pharmaceuticals like ivermectin. So when they tell you all the reasons Twitter employees want to leave, or how the firm will never be the same, or all the reasons you should be skeptical, no, they are telling you the truth. When Elon Musk is accused of not operating in your best interests, ask them three questions. When was the last time Facebook, Twitter or Instagram volunteered to host an alternative point of view for all of the world's residents to hear? When was the last time our government stood up to protect your right to talk freely, worship openly or use your medical exemption to avoid vaccination? When was the last time you read an article in the New York Times or the Washington Post criticizing the US government's response to the pandemic? These questions and their responses demonstrate that our government and affiliated mouthpieces despise competing viewpoints. Our administration, like Beijing, China, or Moscow, Russia, lies, cheats, and deliberately suppresses any and all alternative opinions. We have devolved into a dictatorial society. Musk, on the other hand, accepts and even welcomes competing viewpoints. This, as our founding fathers underlined, is the hallmark of liberty, the point of democracy, and the mark of a free and open society. The acceptance of opposing viewpoints is the most tangible sign that one lives in a free society. The government's prohibition of competing viewpoints, on the other hand, is indicative of tyranny. The time has come to restore our rights, liberties and fundamental guarantees. And the first step is to revamp Twitter. There is a reason the traditional media was so outraged by Musk's purchase of Twitter. And that's because they realize it could spell the end of the Great Reset. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. And we'll see you again with another interesting video.